Thanks for stopping by. I did not know that. Please like and subscribe. I'll think about it. It's all I ask. Coming up on this episode of I Did Not Know That. His assailant quickly got to his feet and then began kicking Garner in the head, chest, and groin. Garner said the man was wearing boots with pointed toes. He said at one point he pretended to be unconscious, but the man kept on kicking him. James Garner had one of the most recognizable faces in America from the 1950s until his death in 2014. He was also one of the most liked celebrities of his era. He made a name for himself in a western called Maverick in the late 50s, playing a wisecracking and lovable card player. Then he went on to make films like The Great Escape, Support Your Local Sheriff, and many more. He returned to television in 1974 in The Rockford Files, a laid-back detective who kept his gun in a cookie jar and who lived in a beat-up trailer on the ocean. His portrayal changed the TV detective genre and became one of the most loved and respected programs of all time. He also did such popular and funny Polaroid commercials with Marriott Hartley that many thought that they were married. It got so bad that Hartley had a t-shirt made that said, I am not Mrs. James Garner. Later in life, he did films like Murphy's Romance, The Notebook, and Space Cowboys with his old friend Clint Eastwood. In 1980, Garner had just finished his last episode of the Rockford Files. One of the big reasons he ended the series was because of health issues. As a young man, he'd served in the Korean conflict. He was wounded during that war and also shattered his knees, which earned him two Purple Hearts. The series was hard on his body in many ways. He said in an interview that for some reason, people seemed to love seeing him get beat up. But maybe that was because they knew his character would get revenge in the end. But all that running and jumping on hard pavement ended up creating more damage to his knees and his back, and his body just couldn't take it anymore. On January 16th of 1980, Garner was driving down Coldwater Canyon Boulevard in Los Angeles. Universal Studios had just filed a $1.6 million lawsuit against him for leaving the Rockford Files. It wasn't a good day for James Garner, and it was about to get worse. Much worse. A car behind him began trying to pass him. Garner said that he moved over into the left lane as the car attempted to pass him on the right, but he didn't get out of the way quick enough. His car was hit, and so he motioned with his hand for the other driver to pull over. Garner said he thought the other driver was going to drive away, so he stopped his car in the middle of the street. The 51-year-old Garner stated that he heard footsteps while he was seated in his car, and then he was suddenly hit in the face as he sat there. Garner said because of his back and knee injuries, he struggled to get out of his door while the man repeatedly struck him through the window. When Garner finally got out of the car, he said he swung and missed and then fell onto the man, and they both fell onto the street. His assailant quickly got to his feet and then began kicking Garner in the head, chest, and groin. Garner said the man was wearing boots with pointed toes. He said at one point he pretended to be unconscious, but the man kept on kicking him. Garner's assailant, who was 35, and his sister turned themselves in and during the court trial claimed that Garner had been blocking them when they tried to pass. The accused claimed that Garner had grabbed him first by his shirt and slammed his head against Garner's car. The accused assailant was a former Green Beret with no criminal history. But during the trial, witnesses to the event described the altercation as closer to what Garner had described to the police. Garner joked later during the trial that during the fight, while he didn't land a blow, he did try to bite the attacker. The beating left the actor hospitalized for three days. His attacker was convicted and sentenced to 100 days in jail, a $500 fine, and ordered to pay Garner's hospital bills. One year later, in February of 1981, the effects of the road rage incident played a role in another story that made headlines across the country. Garner was playing golf in the Bing Crosby Pro-Am Golf Tournament in Pebble Beach, California, when a drunk began harassing and yelling at him and his golf partner while they were trying to play. Garner felt that all the yelling caused his partner to miss a putt, which might have been worth $40,000. 
Garner had enough and confronted the man about his behavior. Why don't you pop me? He shouted at Garner. So Garner did just that. Of course, the man sued, and Garner said during the trial that the beating he'd experienced the year before made him instinctively react to the man's behavior. He said he didn't want to be sucker punched and beaten again. The man's lawsuit against him was unsuccessful. The man claimed that he lost the case because everyone likes Jim Garner. Oh, and that lawsuit Universal brought against Garner for quitting the Rockford Files? Garner turned around and sued them back for breach of contract, fraud, and deceit. It was settled out of court in Garner's favor in 1989 for reportedly $14 million. So it seems that just like in his TV shows, Garner may take a beating at first and appear to be defeated, but somehow he always seems to come out on top in the end. Well, we got another one done. I hope you liked it. I had just a faint memory of this story, so it was a bit challenging to go back and find out all the details from something that happened so long ago. Hey, thanks for stopping by.